Welcome to part two. Um, and meet Diosa. She is my Monstera Deliciosa um, that I had problems with at the end of last year. I repotted her on New Year's Eve. She had definite root rot issues. Um, lots of the leaves were dying off. I had to cut off six of her big fenestrated leaves. Um, she has given those back to me now and in droves. This is one of her newest leaves that gave me four fenestrations. Now I have a question. Why does this happen? Um, one of the first leaves after rehabbing her that came out was this one here. So six fenestrations, seriously chubby leaf, love it to bits. Okay, and I'm just looking on this one branch here, okay? I actually just took a cutting off of it as well. But okay, so this one here, six chubby leaves. And then the next one, which is this one, which is a giant leaf, even bigger than the last one, but I only got one fenestration. And then when she throws out this new leaf, there's four fenestrations. Does anybody know why that is? I don't know. Um, but yeah, she's, this leaf as well is huge, but no fenestrations. Um, and that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. I don't mind her taking her time to do this. It's, it's, it's all gravy. It's all great. I'm, I'm totally fine with it. Over here, my peace lily. This is actually two peace lilies. Um, this one down here, I actually called precious because it was so dramatic. I've probably had this peace lily about 10 years and it just stays small and compact, never gets bigger um, or anything. But this one here, I got in a bouquet um, from my mother-in-law's funeral from when she passed away. It is the only plant out of the, um, it was a basket that survived and I still had. Um, I ended up planting them together. I don't remember why. I think it was just to give that that layering texture. Um, and again, we went through some neglect. She's been growing like crazy though since we're in a southwest window um, corner. But the weird thing I thought was, can you see this like little bit of variegation on this leaf? It's just like one stripe of variegation, maybe an inch wide, but yeah, uh, that leaf I have to cut off. I had staked it up and it finally died. Over here, I call you Eve. I call this one Eve because if you saw my, my mystery solved video, then you would see that this is my green apple Congo. Um, plant and it's just shot out this new leaf and all nice and shiny and stuff um, she's so super easy and and just great and I love it over here surprised to be alive my jade plants um, I actually expected them to die because I have not I've never owned a jade this long I think I got them in November November December um, we have learned how to survive with each other. I literally wait until the leaves get squishy. Um, and I wait until they get squishy on the green one before I even water this one, before I even check this one. Um, but yeah, we seem to have found a rhythm. This is my succulent that I have absolutely no idea what it's called. It was given to me from a friend. It was long and lanky. I actually just cut it and stuck it in that dirt there. And I'm hoping it survives. It might, it might not. Again, these three here, completely surprised that they're, they're even alive right now. Um, over here is my Moses in a Cradle, my Tritoscantia, whatever. I'm not sure. Um, it loves this corner right here in the window and I just leave it there. It seems fine, happy, lush. Um, over here, my two Sansevieria Cylindricas, this one here that I got, and then this one right here. Um, they do nothing, so I really have nothing to say about them. They just, again, these are, this is just the area where all things are just kind of surviving. They, they're fine, we're not going to change them, they just live there. Okay, let's see how quickly I can get through this, because this is my, my, my Hoya corner. Um, 
Hoya Australis, Hoya Australis SP Australis, Hoya Obavada Variegata, uh, Pubicalyx Black Dragon, Carnosa. My Vitalina that I chopped um, is looking much happier just being the way she is now. Uh, my Hoya Sweet Scent that has finally, finally started to do something for me. So this makes me super happy. Um, my Hoya Subcalva, which also is, I don't know, just reaching out over here, doing whatever she wants, and that's fine. Um, over here, my Crimson Princess, which I bought and then it died back and is now growing. It's giving me these leaves, and I'm super happy about it. My Hawaiian Royal Purple, I don't know how well you can see that, but we've gone over this one before, and I love it. Um, okay, my very first... Hoya ever, Crimson Queen, or not Crimson Queen, Crimson Princess, finally, finally, threw me out a new leaf. And it's gonna throw me out a couple more. So I'm super happy about that too. This is my, oh, this is my Crimson Queen number one that is also starting to do something for me now, which makes me super happy. Um, it did give me these two beautiful leaves. Um, Look at the crinkle. Wait a minute. No, we're not even gonna go there. Anyway, um, yeah, that is my Crimson Queen. This, my beautiful baby, my favorite Hoya so far, which is actually pulling its makeshift trellis around, is my Hoya Bang Plus Three Spotted Leaves. She is amazing. Um, I had to put her up here because she was just reaching for anything and everything so I kind of wound it around and it's actually looping back around here you can see that um, this was the piece that I broke off that is now I took out of the moss because the roots weren't didn't seem to be growing anymore and now it is in water um, I think that leaf that it was forming also needs light so or more light than it had in the prop box so it is now in water and my pubicalyx splash, which has graced me with two more leaves that I'm very happy about. Um, it seems happy. All my Hoyas seem happy. And that makes me happy. Okay, over in this corner, another plant that I did not think was going to survive is my uh, Calathea medallion. Um, I have determined that they need to come into your home, completely die off, and then grow again. Because this leaf was the first one that came out. Um, this one is new, still unfurling. This one here as well is new. Um, these leaves here have not, they have, they've just sat like that. I've left them. Um, I don't know if I should cut them. I'm kind of just leaving them. Um, I know that everybody says that you should use distilled water for your Calatheas. Um, I'm not that girl, but I do treat my water with an aquarium conditioner and my plants have not had any crispy leaf problems since then. And even with these new leaves here, none of them are crispy. So it's either acclimated and it's used to my crappy water or the aquarium conditioner is working and I choose to believe that it's working. Um, here I have my, it's a propagation of my, um, oh God, golden pothos. Um, there's not a lot of variegation there at all. Kind of just looks green. There's a little chunk there, but that's fine. I'm okay with that. Um, over here, this is a little aloe that a friend gave me. Um, she gave me one before and I totally killed it because, you know, me and succulents don't mix. Um, it actually threw out though this tiny little bit. I'm, I'm assuming that things are well because it's like, it's trying to grow for me. It's trying. Look at that tiny little thing. Can you see? Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, this is a total fluke that came in on one of the jade plants. It, um, when I went to transplant it, it just had this tiny little succulent leaf. 
this is how long, when did I get that? November, December, this is how long it has taken to form this. And you know what? I know nothing about succulents, so if somebody can actually tell me what this is, that would be great. I want to say like a donkey's tail or a burrow's tail or something like that, but I don't know enough about them to accurately say that's what it is. Uh, this here is one of my begonia propagations. I have many begonias. I love to propagate them. Um, can't remember what this one is called, but it's happy. And I'm super impressed with it, especially this leaf here, which has had some trouble. Focus. But that's okay. She'll be fine. Need some water. She's feeling a bit light. This one I was just talking about the other day is my Pilea peperomoides. Um, I bought it in a two inch plant at the beginning of the year. If you saw in my bedroom, there was a little elephant with something dead in it, but I can't remember what was in there that had died, but um, it came in that tiny little elephant in a little two inch pot. And I've already taken a baby out of it for a friend, which you'll see. And it's just, just wants to grow. Just wants to grow and go. Ha, huh, you can see my, corn seedlings out there, which I still have to plant and I haven't done yet. Um, next, oh, you'll see my avocado seeds that I am going to germinate. Um, I did that over the winter. I had six, only one has grown. I will probably show you that in another video because it is outside with my outdoor stuff. And then here is my Saracenia. Don't remember which one it is, but it is a carnivorous plant. Um, honestly, this is the only plant that I own. Let's see if we can get it better. It's the only plant that I own that I will give like um, bottled water to because it's carnivorous. Um, we have had our struggles. I let it get dry. It was in a window where it kind of burnt. Um, this one too over here. Now, the, oh, the thing I didn't know, though, is that, and I actually saw it when I went back to the um, nursery where I got it from, because they still had some there, is that when they grow, out of the, out of the mouth, there, out of the little mouth, there will be, I call it a mouth, um, this little tendril that comes up with these two other little, looks kind of, almost looks like a little mustache, that will come up out of it, and I guess that's to catch the bugs. What I have noticed about mine is that for some reason the bugs just go in there and don't come back out. And again, I'm okay with that because you know, fungus gnats. Um, this is a new shoot right here that's growing. It's the first one that's grown in my care. I've only had it about two months. So the fact that it's still alive after two months says a lot. Okay, you can go back here, hanging out the window. You're perfect. I do have propagations going on up here as well, but we will go over those another time. On to, am I done in here? Oh no, I've got one more. My spider plant, which has just gone completely crazy. Crazy, crazy. When I got it, it was just a tiny little shell of a thing with maybe six or seven leaves. That has changed. But uh, again, she's happy. Um, they all seem happy. I'm not sure if it's the fertilizer that I use. You ever have that one plant that you just like, you kind of pet, you just want to touch? Um, I will actually be doing a video experiment on fertilizers because for some reason I have a lot of different fertilizers from organic, different kinds of organic fertilizers to synthetic. So I'm actually planning something special um, to see which ones actually do a better job. if any of them really do a better job or if they all do the same job but again I digress okay so that is everything in my kitchen <sighs> on to the living room wait I had one more in the kitchen and it's kind of in between the kitchen and the living room so I forgot about it this is Larry this is Larry my Rojo Congo Larry is lazy but Larry is pretty um I'm so in love with this plant. So in love with this plant. I can't even, I don't even have words. Um, well, of course I have words, but yeah. 
Look at Larry. This new leaf, for some reason, is kind of stuck as well. Um, I'm trying to help it get out of there just a little bit. It's just kind of stuck in the sheath. It's like it didn't get pushed out enough. Um, but I don't want to do too much because I don't want to actually damage the leaf or anything. That leaf, this leaf was coming in when I received the plant. Um, so I can't actually say that it is a leaf grown in my care because it was already growing. Um, either way though, it's here. Okay, so now we're in my living room. We're gonna start over here and this is my golden pothos, which is looking a little less golden. Um, I'm trying to hopefully get her variegation back. I've had her about nine years now. Um, last year did a big repot with her because she'd been in the same pot for about eight years and was stunted. So now she's got this moss pole um, and I'm hoping that she, I mean, she looks much better than she did. So that's good. And I've got like speckles of variegation on there, but you know, nothing big and chunky. Um, over here is a plant that again, I am completely shocked that is alive. Um, I had a tanniki. It died. Um, ficuses are not my strong point. Same with the jades, not at all. Um, this plant has now given me two leaves. They're still rather small. Yeah, they're small. This is the newest leaf. And this is the one that came out before it, which is a little bit bigger. But anyway, shocked, completely shocked that this plant is still alive. My Dracaena marginata? Um, I honestly don't even know if this is growing. Uh, this is another one that just doesn't... <laughs> I'm surprised it's alive. I've actually only lost maybe two or three leaves. I've had this about eight, nine months. Um, I mean, I guess it has grown compared to what it was when I got it, but I, I honestly couldn't tell you. It just kind of sits there and does nothing. This is one of my two snake plants that um, at Art Naps, that's the nursery that my daughter works at. Um, in their flower department, they use these and other leaves of tropical plants for flower arrangements. And then what they do is they put these in water and they put them on sale for like $2. So this was an unrooted cutting when I got it for like $2. Um, I picked up two of them. The other one is over here a little bit taller. I call them Cheech and Chong. Don't ask me why, I just do. Um, hopefully they're rooted now. I, well, I'm pretty sure they're rooted. I'm, now I'm just waiting for them to do something else other than just look pretty, because that's what they do. Um, dogs. Sorry, waited for the dogs to stop. Um, this is my Philodendron Brazil. We've had we have had trouble. Um, this was another one that was part of my uh, neglectful past life. Um, it was big and bushy. I cut it all back. That's a whole long sorted story. Um, it's just started to start filling out and growing and everything again. And the thing I love about philodendrons is that these leaves look small now, but they will get bigger. Down here is my Ficus Benjamina, another one I'm surprised as hell that is alive right now. Um, all I do is water it. I put it in one spot. I left it. Same with the, the uh, rubber tree. It's been in that window since I got it. This tree has been here since I got it. That's where it will stay forever. Um, I've lost one leaf off of it. Um, so I think I'm doing, and it's actually gotten considerably bigger since I got it. Um, but yeah, I have nothing else to say except for this little guy right here that's just waving away. I should probably, maybe I should try and cut and propagate it. Um, maybe make it look a little less wild. I'm going to think about that. My rattlesnake Calathea. Yeah, I can't even say anything. I'm surprised that's still alive, too. It's apparently one of the easier Calatheas. I mean, sure. I just, I, it's one of those ones I don't pay any attention to. This here, 
Now, this big boy, I'm, I'm fairly certain that it is a philodendron black cardinal, but it was sold to me as an imperial red, and there's absolutely no way that this is an imperial red. So that is that with this guy. I do love him though. Okay, now to my shelf, or actually up here is my pearls and jade. Um, my pearls and jade pothos. Um, it's been a kind of a slow grower. It's taken a lot to get to this point. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I love it. It just kind of does its thing. Um, it gives me no signs whatsoever. And when it's thirsty, I'll walk by and like lift the pot and be like, oh my goodness, oh, it's been watered, so it's kind of heavy. But, well, maybe I should try and keep my camera straight. Um, but so far, so good with this guy. Um, I got it from, where did I get it from? Wild, Wildwood Outdoor Living on Vancouver Island. Um, they were actually the very first person, or very first person, very first place that I ordered plants from online. Um, and only, I think only two of them have died. I ordered seven in my first order and two of them are no longer with me. Okay, here is, this is just a propagation of my Moses and Cradle. And over here, rescued from the dollar store, is my Moses in a boat. So you can tell where, which direction the light comes from in this room. If I leave the back door open, um, it's reaching for the light. I will more than likely just cut that down um, to try and promote more growth, which I'm also gonna do to this one. They're kind of like experimental, but underneath it's purple. Um, I think that if it had more light, if it had more light, you would see the variegation better. Um, like you can see it, you can see it on that leaf there. Okay, my Marble Queen that I love, but has constant issues with browning. I don't know what that is, why that is. Um, I have just propagated it. Um, I took the cuttings off the back side because I didn't want to mess with this growing off the side. This is my, what's it called, a Gasteria? I think that's what it's called. I don't know which variety of it. Um, it was given to me by a friend. Another one I'm completely shocked that's still alive. I have nothing else I can say about it. My Neon Pothos, I love, love, love this plant, but I really wish that it would trail because I don't know why it's doing this, can you see this? It's doing this curl thing. I just I just need it to trail. I'm hoping that it does, and I would like to propagate it. Um, even, oops. Even back here, these are all turning and curling. Obviously, I'm trying to get to the light. But yeah, I love this plant so much. I love the color of it. I love that it gets these, sometimes these little dark parts. Yes, moving on. Oh, oh, okay. Here's Peperomia Hell. Okay, so um, Peperomias are something else that I have struggled with forever. So this one here, um, I let it, it's actually bone dry right now um, because that's the only way that it'll live. Um, my, it, it's, it's an obtusifolia, but I find that, I mean, this one's kind of got really wonky shaped leaves but then this one over here which is also an otusifolia um okay so this one was bushier here's my thing so i let them get dry um this pot does have drainage um it's ceramic but it does have drainage but every time i water this plant part of it rots out i'll give it a thorough water part of it rots out um the new growth on both of these just isn't like sustained. It'll start to grow new leaves and then they die. 
Oh, see, even this one in here. See, look at that. Right there. That's what happens when I water them. Now this one here, oh, this sad story display, is a pepperoni, Peperomia argeria, a friend got me. Um, she is wonderful with Peperomias. I am not so much. So I kind of tried to do the same thing. I let it dry out. It's in this terracotta pot. I give it a thorough water. Um, it just, nothing, nothing seems to work for this plant whatsoever. So I'm literally just waiting for it to die. Just waiting for it to die. Um, down here, my tabletop palm, um, also given to me by a friend whose kitty cats like to eat it. Um, so she gave it to me. I don't know. Um, I've had it a couple of months now. Uh, I repotted it in it was my first video. It really hasn't done anything since. So, yeah, I'm not much of a palm person either, but it's, it's still alive, right? That's what matters. Here is a baby from my Pilea peperomoides, which is, well, it's not super dry. Um, so this was pretty much the size of that plant when I brought it home in a two inch pot. And this is a three inch pot, I believe. Um, and that was just, that was a baby that was already in there. So I waited for it to get big enough for me to um, root. And that is going to a friend. Um, this dude down here, love it. That's all I can say, because it doesn't do anything. None, none of the sands of areas do anything. Um, it did grow these two, this stock here and this stock here. It did grow both of them in my care. Um, so now I just kind of let it do its thing. I check on it every once in a while. I water it once a month and all my sense of areas get, and my ZZ plant, succulents, all of them get watered once a month, except for the jades because I, I pinch their leaves and they let me know. So doing that, I realized that I have still have to do the plants in my bathroom and in my hospice. I'm calling it a hospice because that's where all my plants that have been attacked by thrips in Thripsgate 2020 now live. And I'm going to have to add another one to, to that list. But off we go. Okay, the light is super weird and bad in here. Okay, so I'm going to have to actually step into my bathtub. Okay. Um, oh, that's better. Okay. Um, my bathroom is where my begonias live. So this here is my red kiss. And I'm going to tell you right now that I do not know all of the names of these because if you ever tried to search Rex begonias, it is not an easy thing to do. So um, this is my red kiss though. I know that. I don't know why all these leaves are like itty -bo itty bitty and tiny, but I think it's cute. Um, I've had it for so many years now that as long as it's still alive, I'm totally fine with that. Um, this one as well, which I think is a fireworks begonia, but I'm not sure. I'm not actually sure if they have, or it was a purple, purple plush or purple something. I can't remember. Ah! Anyway, um, this is one of my favorites, and for the first time ever since in, in all the years that I've had it, it bloomed. Um, they're dead now, but it did bloom. Um, this one here, oh, I recently got from Walmart. Um, it had these crispy leaves on it already. It did drop a few um, during the acclimation process, but it is now growing a new leaf, so that makes me very happy. This one here, I have also had for many years. Um, my daughter named her Bailey, I don't remember why. As it gets older, the uh, red kind of fades out to a pink. 
but I've had this plant so long and this is actually the plant that I showed you the baby of in my kitchen. It was propagated from this plant. Um, I think that I'm gonna have to put something underneath it just to lift it up a little bit because it's growing up against the side of the pot. But she's fabulous. I think she's one of my favorite Rex begonias. Still don't know the name of it. Um, this one here too, I also got from Walmart. We've had a little bit of trouble. Um, it lost a few leaves. Um, I think I got them within a day of each other or so. It was one of the last ones there and I didn't want to leave it there because it looked awful. But it too is starting to grow new leaves. So you must be happy on this windowsill. This is a west facing window. And this windowsill is like in my bath. So, uh, this one I know is called a baby dress. Um, it was funny, I actually didn't want this one. I thought it looked really weird. But my daughter, oh, I haven't looked at the other side. Oh my God. <gasps> You hear the snapping? Oh, that's not good. I don't know what I did. I think it's okay. Um, oh, look at that. I didn't even know that that happened. Um, I didn't want this one at first, and my daughter made this big plea saying that all plants need love and that I love Rex begonias. I just can't leave one behind anyway. Um, she brought me this, and it's been absolutely fabulous. Um, you know what I just realized? No, of course you don't know what I just realized. When she gave me this plant, she gave me another Rex begonia. It must have died because that plant is no longer here. I have no idea what happened to it. Oh, you know what? Never mind. It was this one. That's right. Because I had one of these previously. So I actually haven't had this one for years. I've only had it for about a year and a half. Um, I did have one previously, which is why she got me this one, was to replace, oh, light's so bad, um, was to replace that one that I lost. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, this one is just amazing. It, it is giving me no trouble whatsoever. Okay, now. This one here was on my wish list. It is the Begonia Dark Mambo. Um, I was so super excited to get this. I can't remember. <sighs> the footage for the unboxing didn't turn out right. I've actually had this for a couple of months now. Um, but the footage for the unboxing was just literally crap. So um, I scrapped it and I always meant to and show it. I don't even think I posted it on Instagram actually. I should probably do that. But uh, some of these leaves, I don't know why they were cut off like that. Um, but yeah, you see the red undersides. I love Rex Begonia so much. So um, that is all the plants in my bathroom. I'm not going to show you the propagations because that will be another video um, because I just have them everywhere. And off to my hospice room now. All right, now we're into a sad state of affairs. Um, this is my Thai constellation. Um, if any of you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen what has happened with this. I was so happy to finally get a new leaf and this new leaf ended up having thrips. I don't know if you can see the damage besides this brown tip here. Um, the damage is extensive, for for sure. Um, I read that thrips like the color white or like cream, um, because these other leaves have not been affected at all, and there were no adults on this plant. It was literally only babies, and it's funny because I always think that this little dot here is a thrip, but it's it's not. Um, so, I want to cut it off but at the same time I don't because I am hoping that sooner rather than later I get new growth. Um, this plant has only managed to get, have three leaves at any given time since I've had it. So again once this new leaf grows this one will be cut off and it'll still be a three leaf plant. But hopefully 
I've gotten rid of the thrips. Um, this, my poor, sad, 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 tiger tooth philodendron, which also got attacked by thrips, um, is surprising me though, like she wants to live. Um, all of her leaves got chewed off by them. Um, I have dosed her as much as I possibly can without, no, oh, hang on. Uh, if you've watched my channel at all, you would know that we have motorcycles everywhere. Um, I haven't been able to ride much myself this this year, but that hopefully will change next month. The weather hasn't really been that great either. Anyway, back to my sad, 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 sad tiger tooth. Um, but it's starting. Oh, you can't see it. Oh yeah, my maybe right down here, right in there. There's new growth. Um, there is a new leaf coming here. I'm just gonna have to be very careful. And when the leaves come out, I'm gonna have to um, do the best that I can. Like this pot is like 12 inches, 12 inches, maybe 14. I don't know, it says volume 5.5 liters, which I'm not actually used to seeing. And wait, clay pot. Eight inch. No, that's, no. Nine point eight inch, whatever. Anyway, it's a big pot. So you can imagine how big the plant was before this. Um, hopefully I can bring her back to her former glory. Over here, my lemon lime philodendron that my roommate got me for my birthday got hit hard with thrips, hard. Um, I am praying that she lives. Um, this leaf is literally the only one unaffected in any way. You do not need to be watered. I just watered you. Why are you curling? Why are you curling? Please don't tell me that we have an issue. Wait, why am I using my camera? I can't see. Then again, this is not a video about thrips. Oh, thank God that wasn't one. Okay. Um, yeah, I wandered off there for a second. Anyway, you gotta see the good with the bad, right? We all have our struggles. Um, here are my succulent propagations, which will probably die, except for that little one right there. It's, it's gonna make it. Um, but yeah, we don't need to see those. My Syngonium Wenlandii was my pride and joy. Um, I just recently had to cut, cut her all back as much as I possibly could. I've got pieces of her propagating, um, but hopefully she, she survives and it's going to kill me if she doesn't. <laughs> 